Hi guys, Ben from Killer Crop Conga. We're joined by Sabo's Football Club of Sheffield and District Junior Leagues. Um, they play right through from the small age groups right through to adult leagues. Um, we just have a quick chat today about sponsorship, attracting players, and what it means to be a grassroots football team in certain areas of Sheffield. Guys, welcome. Can I get your names and your roles within the club? I'm Adam, I'm the under 12s manager and social media manager. Craig. Chairman of Sally Wolves and co-founder. There we go, so we've got um, quite influential members of the of different age groups within the club. Um, so we're just going to have a quick chat about um, how to run a grassroots football club. Guys, every team needs players. How do you go about attracting them? Mainly social media at the minute. Um, posters, shops, directs, footwalking. There's no word of mouth really, that's why. Yeah. Word of mouth. Are you getting lots of players where uh, their friends are coming along as well and that kind of thing? Yeah. School. At the younger yeah. age group, school, school yeah. mates. Cool. They all want to play together as friends. So. Yeah, so I guess that's a positive that they're already playing together then. Yeah. So. so we are a local club. Yes. Perfect. So, I mean, as you get a little bit older, certain teams don't train, do they? You know, you start matches on the Sunday because they've got commitments and that kind of thing. Are you guys training during the week as well as playing on Sundays? Every Tuesday and every Sunday. Perfect. Yeah. So, so where do you also school? Is it? Yeah. It's a good facility, right? Chelsea yeah. School. Yeah. Expensive. But yeah. Good. Oh, we'll get on. To, we'll get on to the expense of grassroots football in a second. But um, is that an appeal to parents that they, that you've got training sessions as well? You know, like get the kids out of the house and yeah. do something yeah. productive and stuff. Yeah. yeah. We sat down with um, a couple of lads from Qualitas Soccer Academy and they have some players that um, move into academies. So one was at Sheffield United and one was at Sheffield Wednesday. And that they were saying that their training sessions there are based very much around tactics and they're not playing a lot, they're actually learning how to play in the position. What kind of methods do you apply to training sessions? Is it quite technical based, game based, or is it a bit of tactics as well? Are they an age where you know, they don't want to be learning tactics, they just want to play football. It, it depends on what you get, what quality of players you get. As in, us under 12s, we've attracted three players that have already played football for six years, haven't it? Which we've never done before. Usually it's just friends who come on who've never played before. Yeah. So usually our tactic and our role towards football and training is we just get used to playing football, haven't it? And then they move on to another club, who then, then they learn. But yeah. now we're coming to that club where we do to teach them about the tactics, the mm -hmm. positions, things like that. So at the minute, it's, it's a work in progress of what we do during training. Yeah. It's a progression. Mm. And we set up in 2010, it went to set teams up for enjoyment. It has now seven years. But we've sort of men and men and image of near football. We're becoming more interested in tactics, yeah. positions. No, I think that definitely it speaks volumes. Obviously, we talk off camera prior about winning the De Development Club of the Year in um, Sheffield, Alamshire, County FA. So congratulations for that guys, it speaks volumes in seven years, you know, so I guess that helps us not it with attracting players that have gone from being a feeder club into being a club where people want to play for, so it makes it a little bit easier. What kind of advice, for a club that's just starting out, what kind of advice would you give to them in terms of attracting players and that kind of thing? Originally, to attract, we had a, we put a poop, complete fund in Parson Cross Park, which got us seven teams. Oh really? Wow. When, in 2010. And we've we lost a few teams a few years after. Then we're back up to eight, maybe nine teams this season. Yeah. It's, it's a case of just getting your name out and start off as an enjoyment and then progress through. Yeah. As you grow, so do your players, so do your, your parents and everybody else. Yeah. So like, and again, we, we did speak off camera uh, for a short while around um, the catchment area of Sarby Wolves. So they're the only club in Parsons Cross in Sheffield that actually has uh, that progression route and different age groups. Does that help? Has that helped? Yeah. 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 Yes, it's local. Yeah. Training facilities are local, the home pitch is local. And we saw, I think every player we've got is, they all live within a mile radius. Yeah, which helps the guys with the training pitch. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, at, at the moment, Kit Locker Way, we've just run a survey around uh, grassroots sponsorship. We, we looked at like 500 local businesses and what kind of, what, what teams come to them with in terms of like a pitch, like we sponsor my team because of, we get 
50 people watching, that kind of thing. Mm. Do you, what's your approach to sponsorship? Are you going to businesses and saying, can you sponsor us because we've got eight age groups? Or is it, are you got picking from that parent group of the kids that are playing and saying, can your business sponsor us or fund us? Well, at the minute, we're luckily enough to have a man called Jay, who we should have brought to here to speak about this. He is, is a local businessman, he gets all the sponsors for us. Right, he's, got, he's got a gift at Gabriel, really sells the club on what we've done, especially this season with the development club. Yeah. That's that's a big thing for us and it's a big selling point that I mean, it is, is working. Yeah. It's working well for us. So is he is he approaching is it local businesses then yeah. that are putting money into the club? Yeah. It's, 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 we have got some national sponsors but mainly it's local businesses, yeah. 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 Perfect. And it, and I, what the next question was, is it hard to secure sponsorship? But I guess if he's doing that and he's putting it on the plate for you guys and that's perfect. Yeah. But do you think do you think it's hard for other clubs to get sponsorship? Yeah. I've been involved in junior football 20 years and getting sponsorship is probably the hardest job yeah. in junior football. Mm. And is that, is that what you're for? Getting sponsorship. Yeah, because the expense of junior football clubs is increasing every year yeah. and grants, grants have been cut back dr drastically. Yeah. So just, just keeping a club afloat is a major, major task. And I, and I guess that, when you, in terms of sponsorship, you're looking at match kit, training kit, training facilities, match for pit the pitchers, referees. Is that where's the kind of like the main money going to? Is it clothing or is it the pitchers? Is that where you're spending? Kits, mainly kits. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the training facilities, that's, that's covered by subs. Yeah. So you, your, subs main, your, sub, your subs keep your club afloat. And your sponsorship is just an added bonus. Yeah. What would you um, What would you suggest to a club that's struggling for sponsorship? What kind of advice would you give them to uh, to get that sponsorship? Just just go start. Just, start. Persevere. Persevere. Yeah. Persevere. just pound and pound and pound and hope you draw lucky. Maybe get lucky and get yeah. someone that funds yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Don't as much as you can do. No. No. And I, and I guess that comes from number six is right through tackles, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just other things. Um. So next question is, I guess it's not even a question. We, we had a look at your social media channels and it's definitely Twitter where most of that, the material's going out yeah. and also track players and that kind of thing. Are you also using like local forums and that kind of thing to try and attract players or is that the Twitter your main source of? Twitter, Twitter's our main thing, then Facebook, then we, we do occasionally put posts on your country, your, your Sheffield forum, things like that. It's not, it's not a mainstreamer. Are advertising, but yeah. it's there if we need it, kind yeah. of thing. It's yeah. like our last choice. Yeah. So you have it, guys. For any club that's looking for players, get onto Twitter, and then is it like you, you like you tagging like just local yeah. leagues in local and county affairs and, and that yeah. kind of thing as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, Cyber Wolves are a chart standard team, so, and this is the new ball for the 2017-18 season. So it's got there the McDonald's um, McDonald's printer on it, guys. What do you think? It's nice. It's what kids are more bothered about is design, aren't they? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and, and it's plain, simple, effective. But feel of it, it's nice. It's it's spongy. It feels pretty quality. Yeah, right. Nice yeah. So it's based on the Premier League ball, the yeah, Order Order Five for next season. So that's what kids love. Yeah, and they see it on TV and they want to play. Yes. So it's a it's a good idea. That's it's a good right. ball. So. Uh, this ball is on kitlocker.com, uh, it is around 30% off RLP and the stock's pretty high at the minute so make sure that you're getting in time for next season. Next season, obviously we talked about next season, are you guys ready? Have you got players, pitchers sorted? Uh, Player-wise, team-wise, I think we're all ready, so just meant yeah. our last few signings and I'll be honest, it's a good progression from last season. Yeah. Especially Did you guys win the cup last year? Yeah, right under, 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 under 12, well, under 11 last year, well, well my team. Yeah. Like last year, yeah. it's a big thing for us because we saw our second second season of the team together. Quality. Yeah, we we attracted players that that benefited us. Yeah. We won't go to other clubs as you expect, and this little club is what we are, isn't it? But with winning that award, it's it's attracted better players in a sense. Yeah. To cover up all the team, we've got plenty of plenty of depth in the team. That that's the thing about. It. I suppose that's the perfect marketing material for the cup winners. Yeah. So, no congratulations, and uh, hopefully it continues for next season, guys. So that's it guys, just to wrap up, um, that is an insight into how to run a successful grassroots team. You need 
uh, a member of the staff that can, uh, the Scottish Gift and the Gab that can approach local businesses, secure sponsorship, and also have people that are dedicated enough that aren't just running training and match matches. They're also working behind the scenes tiles to, to attract players, make sure that sponsorship's there, uh, both the training facilities, and make sure there's refs there every week. Um, and obviously, it's a massive thing in the community as well. So. Yeah, hopefully that's been giving you a good insight into how to run a grassroots team and plenty more videos like this to come.